A decades old mystery that many people in Western New York may have never even known about is close to being solved tonight. It involves more than 900 graves that were moved in the 50s, but the records of where they were moved disappeared. Investigative reporter Steve Brown has the exclusive story in this two on your side original investigation dead and gone. It's an expression of love. Hey, Boucher. Hey, Grandma. Evelyn and Jim Roycroft regularly visit their departed family. Today, it's Jim's grandmother, Antonina. You know you're not forgotten. Everybody remembers you, and that's the main point of our quest of finally finding your husband, John. John Slumshevsky. This is him in a butcher's apron with a bushy white mustache. He died in 1954 when Jim Roycroft was just a boy. What I remember is my father driving out to Wendy, old folks home way out on Walden Avenue, where he was an in, uh, a resident. And I remember we would visit him. I don't think he spoke English, but I knew him. But finding Grandpa John's grave became a puzzle the Roy Cross could not solve. They found a funeral card indicating he was buried at St. Adelbert Cemetery. There are two. St. Adelbert cemeteries on Dale Road in Cheektowaga that were open in 1954. No marker in either for John Slomshevsky. And St. Adelbert's church was consolidated with another parish years ago and records were missing. We went through book after book after book and his name wasn't, the only place was on that little card. The Roycrofts did hear an old story of a mass exhumation that decades ago, hundreds of graves at St. Adelbert Cemetery were moved. But where were the records of this? The folks at the cemetery office did not know. And they said, if, if you find them, let us know. So Two on Your Side spent some time looking at old microfilm, hunting for newspaper stories about digging up hundreds of bodies. We found exactly one. October of 1956, the Cheektowaga Times reporting cemetery property became a target of the neighboring New York Central Railroad. They were in an expansion mode and had their eyes on parcels of both of the cemetery properties. To give you an idea of how big the cemetery used to be, we give you a look from up above. Now, the railroad went to court seeking to have those parcels of property condemned to take it for their purposes. Instead, there was a real estate deal. Both parcels sold to the railroad for $45,000. The catch that the railroad had to exhume and rebury over 800 bodies, John Slomshevsky's included. But again, in the generally tight packed cemetery where stones are almost shoulder to shoulder, row after row, there is no gravestone bearing his name and no known records of where he was reburied. Then we caught a bit of a break. Here, this town of Cheektowaga building houses old records in it we found the records documenting the disinterment of the bodies. And on November 2nd, 1956, records show that day 21 adults and 18 unknown babies were transferred, among them John Slomshevsky. The document says he was reburied in St. Adelbert Cemetery, but no indication where. Stumped, we turned to Catholic cemeteries. You see, Catholic cemeteries now manages the St. Adelbert cemeteries, and they have access to places we don't like this building on the grounds of the old St. Adelbert Cemetery. When it was searched, a big discovery, an old three ring binder inside details of the 1956 reburials. And that information was shared with the Roycrofts just last week. It looks like you found more than we did. We wanted to help you guys as much as we can. All those bodies had to be exhumed. Right. We believe it was about 933. Who actually did the moving, do you know? It was a nursery uh, that they contracted with. A nursery. A nursery. Documents note an undertaker was present each day during the six weeks it took to move all of the bodies, but no documentation of clergy being present. The frustrating thing for us is where we were able to recreate where almost everyone is. John is not 100% in uh, it, we weren't able to do that. This has been so disheartening, especially with the church teachings that we've grown up with. Because of gaps in the record, 
the closest they could get to John Slomshevsky's grave was an educated guess. And this is where we think he was moved to. Maybe John with a question mark. Well, it, there's no stone there. This was certainly not the news the Roy Crofts hoped for, but because the mass exhumation was largely an unknown story, Catholic cemeteries offered to do this. We want to put this monument up for everybody that was moved. We'd like to put it over in section C where it's gonna dedicate it to all the adults and the children that were relocated in 1956 to the New York Central Railroad expansion. I think we need to be their voice. They that's, did that's, live. Mm -hmm. That's nice. I can see that we'll never know for sure anybody. And who knows, maybe someday, if this is televised or shown, somebody's gonna say, oh, I know something. And this morning we have this the very first visit by the Roycrofts to the suspected location of Jim's grandfather. The Roycrofts laid flowers and a handmade cross at the spot, believed to be the final resting place of John Slomshevsky. There is no marker, but one is already in the works. The Roycrofts are grateful that they now have a place to go to pay their respects, and they are hopeful more information will emerge to help confirm that gravesite. We also have this right now on our website, a map showing the today locations of the bodies exhumed at St. Adelbert Cemetery in 1956. Again, that is on our website right now, WGRZ.com. Steve Brown, Channel 2 News. Great job, Steve. Thank you very much. It's not easy. That's hard work digging in all that history stuff. I know, and it's not every day that you yep. get a top-notch right. investigative reporter right. that's going to do, do that. that digging <laughs> and knows how to find out that kind of information. So hopefully that brings the Roy Crofts some peace. And we'll keep you updated if anything changes on this. And right now,